Okay, based on what you know about the unit circle and the values of psi, you know that if you know the values in the first quadrant, it just repeats, right? It's a pattern. Um, psi is positive in the first quadrant, which is uh, the values in the first piece of the table. The second quadrant is the second piece of the table. The sign is still positive. The third piece of the table is the third quadrant. And remember, as you go into the third quadrant, sign is talking about your y values, so they become negative, but they're still the same values. Uh, then the fourth quadrant is down here, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, and so on. Uh, sign is still negative. Okay? And then uh, we didn't deal with the negative angles as much, uh, but we did talk about those from time to time. Um, but remember, negative pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2. Okay? Negative pi over 2 is the same as positive 3 pi over 2. That's why they have the same value. Negative pi is actually the same thing as positive pi. You end up in the same place. It's just a different way of getting there, so it has the same value. Negative 3 pi over 2, uh, go um, clockwise. What I'm trying to point out here is that the function sine of x has a domain of all real numbers. You can plug in positive angles as well as negative angles, and we can go beyond positive 2 pi and negative 2 pi. I'm just restricting it right now um, to kind of zoom in on this specific part of the function. Um, you can see some symmetry here. You can see how it kind of repeats itself. It has the same general shape. Now let me show you on the calculator. If you were to graph this, uh, you need to make sure that you're in radian mode, which you should already be in because that's what you're using to um, uh, fill in the table. All you have to do is fill in the sine of x. However, before you press graph, we need to fix the window because this window is not going to cut it for us. Um, now, to show you that we can go beyond 2 pi and negative 2 pi, I am going to go negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi. Um, and you can type in pi right here, but when you do and you press enter, it's going to convert it to decimal form, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to go negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi. For the scale, I'm going to make my scale the same thing uh, as what I have on the, on the paper. Uh, I'm going to make a tick mark every pi over two units. Now, that's not something that you have to do, but it does help um, if you're just trying to kind of do some of this stuff by inspection. Now, based on this part of the graph, my, what's my greatest y value? What's the greatest y value? One, and what's the least? Negative one. So I don't need to go from negative 10 to positive 10. Um, I am going to go negative two to positive two just to make sure that I have, I can see things fairly clearly. Uh, and then I'm going to press graph. Uh, and you can see this is just a little bit of an expanded version, but it still has the same shape. Um, still has the same stuff going on. You can see how it repeats itself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we call sine of x, well, all of our trig functions are what we call periodic uh, functions. Periodic is just a fancy way of saying that they repeat themselves. Okay, it's a pattern. It repeats over and over and over again. Now, depending on what else we throw in there with the function, uh, the length of that period will change. So we'll talk about that here in a second. <clears throat> so a few characteristics that we need to be familiar with is, first of all, where does it start? And what I mean uh, when I talk about start is when x equals 0, What's the y value? Okay, this one starts at the origin. When x is 0, y is 0. That's what I consider my starting point. <clears throat> the domain, I already mentioned that a second ago, but that is all real numbers. You can plug in any angle. Um, all reals, you know, there are several ways that we have looked at writing this. Negative infinity to positive infinity, the symbol for all real numbers. <clears throat> um, but you can plug in any value, any angle that you want to, and you will be able to evaluate the sign of that angle. There aren't any issues there. 
Now, the range, the range talks about the y values. You just answered that for me a second ago. Um, our range is between negative 1 and positive 1. <clears throat> you can write it like that. You can use interval notation. Now remember, when we include the values, we use the square brackets. Now that's our standard range. We're going to look here in a second at what happens if that uh, if we change some stuff in our in our formula. But that's the standard range for sine of x. <clears throat> now I mentioned that this is a periodic function. Um, so the definition of the period is that it is the distance along the x-axis before the function begins repeating. The distance along the x-axis before the function begins repeating. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in this case I'm going to look at my starting point. Okay, I'm going to start at the origin and I'm going to follow it. And I'm going to see how long it takes before it starts repeating. Now, I don't have it graphed on here, but based on what I saw on my calculator, this, would, this function would continue like this. So it begins repeating when I get to 2 pi. The length of the period of sine of x is 2 pi. If we start at the origin and we follow the function, <coughs> excuse me, when we get to 2 pi, we have hit all the possible y values, all the positive y values, all the negative y values, uh, and then it begins to repeat itself at 2 pi. So the length of our period for the sine of x is 2 pi. We also have another new term called the amplitude. The amplitude is defined as the distance from the midline to the highest and or the lowest y value, okay? It should be the same because the midline is our horizontal line of symmetry, okay? It is the line that runs straight through the middle of this function right here that would make it, um, that cuts in half, okay? In this case, our midline is the axis, okay? If we were to draw a horizontal line here through the x-axis, then, um, that would cut our function completely in half. Okay, if we folded this part of the graph down, it's not going to extend below this point right here. If we flip this one up, it's not going to extend above one. The x-axis here is the midline. It's the middle of this function. So the distance from our midline to our highest y value is one. The distance from our midline to our lowest y value is 1. So the standard amplitude for the sine function is 1. Okay, Amplitude is always positive. You may want to put that in parentheses. <coughs> amplitude is always a positive value. Yes, but, it, but we're talking about the distance. Distance is always positive. That's why we usually refer to just the distance to the highest value, y value, um, but that distance should be the same to the lowest y value as well. 